Welcome everybody to the Cornubia Sports Complex for Nothing But Net Media's presentation of the QBL 2016 action here as the Logan Thunder women's team host the Bundaberg Bears women's in the first round of the QBL 2016 season. I'm John Guana and I will be joined shortly by Katie Harris, former Logan Thunder player. Sorry for the technical difficulties there. Previewing a few uh, options that we'll bring to you throughout the broadcast, and that's actually, we're going to bring you through some live Twitter interaction. So if you are watching and you're on Twitter, send us through your tweets using the hashtag QBL16, and we'll see if we can get you live on the air, and we'll also answer any questions you have or hopefully any nice comments that you have. It's going to be a big matchup here for both teams. It's an early pool game for the Thunder as well as the Bundaberg Bears. So both teams able, with the opportunity, to get an early in conference or in pool win under their belts here. See the captains meeting at the half, half court, the center court line. Uh, obviously just having a quick chat, talking about what type of things they're gonna do. And uh, we'll see what happens here. I got a chance to see the Logan Thunder in their first uh, preseason, or one of their first preseason hit outs last week and uh, against the Brisbane Capitals. Logan Thunder came out absolutely shooting all guns blazing and absolutely demolished the Brisbane Capitals in that first half. Uh, unfortunately, they came out and were a totally different team in the second half. Brisbane packed the paint and forced Logan to beat them from the outside, and that's where the Thunder really struggled. So it will be interesting to see what Bundaberg does to try and counteract the firepower of the Logan Thunder. Uh, Logan has a lot of talented guards, uh, led by the captain, Michaela Donnelly. Uh, also coming in, Neil Goodchild, I want to give her a big shout out, as well as Ula Matuga, both from the Logan Thunder, both very young QBL players. Uh, Neil Goodchild named to the under-17 Australian national team, and Ula Matuga it was named as well as a reserve. So congratulations, girls, on the honor and representing your country uh, in the beautiful game of basketball that we all love. Got about four minutes to go here on the tip-off, and to be honest with you folks, not really sure what to expect out of the Bundaberg Bears. Uh, they travel lightly here into the game, come out uh, traveling with about six players, go through the Bundaberg Bears lineup, and um, let's have a quick look at them. They've got traveling with uh, Bundy. We've got Caitlin Clancy, Kylie Giles, Ashley Frampton, Kelly Page, Christina Bogue, Carly Bogue, Stephanie Rabine, and uh, Jane Lester. And I uh, better take the time to welcome into uh, the booth here. Katie Harris. Katie, how are you? How are you going, John? Yeah, pretty good, thank you. Mate, bit of, tr bit of traffic. Time. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> good old Brisbane traffic. It you can was. never you never know what you're gonna get. I left a bit early myself, so uh, I think I beat most of the traffic, but must be pretty excited. QBL's back around. It is first the uh, opening ga opening game, so it's a home home team pool, so yeah, it's gonna be massive. Yeah, and um, I'm not you you've you've played previously in the QBL. What do you think about the talent levels in the QBL nowadays? Um I don't know, I think since I started it's gone a bit backwards, but a couple of teams have signed some massive players, so, and tonight I think, you know, the teams are similar to last season, um, but I haven't really looked at this, the scouting report yet, so. <laughs> That's all right, well, Bundy, Bundy comes in, as I was saying before, traveling a bit lightly, as they usually do, you know, when you come from out of town, you, yep. you travel as lightly as you can, um, but it's going to be a tough game, Logan here is, is full strength. And uh, it's going to be a tough, tough battle. Early, early game in the conference battle. So a good opportunity for both teams to get an early win and against someone they're going to see again. Oh gosh, yeah. And then this game could be dependent on who who makes the finals. So it's huge. It's massive for them. It's good to see actually Cassie Smith out there in the Logan jersey. Yeah, Cassie. Uh, we saw Cassie play last week against uh, Brisbane, and that was a she had a great game. And certainly expecting another great game from Cassie. She said, definitely mentioned to us that she's feeling uh, feeling the aches and pains yeah. a little bit, um, yeah. but she was very happy to get a couple of games under her belt. What do you expect out of someone like Cassie Smith? I mean, she's, oh, she's, she's a, a vet. Yeah. Yeah, she, you know, she's played for years at the senior level WNBL, so she will pull this team in. Um, is she captain? Who's captain tonight? 
Uh, Michaela Donnelly. Michaela Donnelly, you know, Cassie will definitely have a big role in tonight if, if they do win. So, yeah. Uh, it'll, be a good, it'll be a good game. Bundy, again, you know, as I was saying before, I don't really, I'm not familiar with Bundy. I'm not really sure what to expect out of them. And that, that first game of the season is always a bit, you know, you, you have as much preseason as you can, but you still really don't know what to expect till the game gets started. Oh, great. I think the similar team to last season. I know their bigs are pretty dominant in there. And it sucks that um, Logan, well, they don't really have any really tall players, do they? So no. they might struggle in tonight's matchup. Yeah, Bundy, Bundy definitely has the size advantage. The Logan Thunder last week, uh, when I saw them play against the Caps, they did a good job inside, really kind of packed the paint and forcing the teams to beat you from the outside. So yep. certainly expect to see that out of uh, the Thunder tonight. You see Alice Honore uh, as an assistant coach. Yeah. She'd be a great player to oh, have yeah. uh, on the court. And yep. uh, when we chatted with Cassie after the preseason game last week, her sister would also be great. But Holly, uh, no. she, Holly, Holly's enjoying Happy retirement. Yeah. <laughs> and what about you, Katie? What are you up to? Uh, nothing, actually. Um, you know, I... I didn't think I would be uh, sitting right here at the first game of the season. I was going to have a year off, but it's good to be back out there. I am kind of envious of the girls. You know, the, the first game butterflies are coming back, but yeah. no, it's good to be here and still a part of it. And are you doing any coaching? What are you yeah, doing? Yeah, full-time uh, at Churchy still, so okay. private boys, grandma. I'm there every night, right. uh, which keeps me really busy, and, and I love it. Yeah, do I don't you, think I'm fit in training anymore. Yeah. <laughs> do you get shots up and everything? You're working uh, well, on you your game? Or? Funny, funny thing, I'm playing netball on a Wednesday night. So Trader. What I a trader. I know, I know. It's crazy. All right, well, we'll take a quick time out here for the national, singing of the national anthem, and we'll come back with the opening tip shortly. Great rendition of the Australian National Anthem there. So no, no Jason Cheney tonight? No Jason Cheney tonight. I didn't Derek get, sticking up. I didn't get a chance to um, find, the, find out what was uh, the story was there. We saw Jason Cheney last weekend at uh, Brisbane. So I uh, hope all the best uh, for Coach Cheney. Uh, Derek is Derek, uh, talking to Derek Rucker. He was on the bench there. I don't know if he will be particularly coaching or just helping out. Yep. But uh, so they do have a couple assistants there, and Alice has a lot of knowledge about the game, so I'm sure she'll be fine. Yeah, sitting in uh, the coach's seat is the assistant coach, Graham Williams, and then uh, Alice Honore is going to slide over to the assistant role. Yep. Uh, Alice is a veteran player, so uh, you've made that s transition from player to coach. What is that like as a, as a player going from player to coach? It's, it's challenging. You know, you get frustrated as a player on the court and then when you're a coach you know all the players get frustrated at you so it is a big step but um i'm loving it though and it is a bit of a challenge but yeah <laughs> it's great so um what do you you are be pretty familiar with uh, the logan thunder squad uh it's a pretty good mix of veterans as well as some really talented youngsters uh if you have a if you have a look at the roster we mentioned uh i pointed out Mila goodchild and Ula Matuga, some of the younger players, but talk to us a little bit about some of the veterans. Well, I do remember Sky from last year. So she was a Brisbane girl, so she must have come across this season. She's a machine. I think she was um, development with the Aussie girls back in the back when she was a junior, but she's really tough inside. And then, obviously, you've got Cassie in there. You've got Michaela running the point. Um, and then Bridget as well, number 13. She's a, a young gun, and she killed it last season. <laughs> That's Bridget O'Brien there for, for the Logan Thunder. So it would be interesting to see how they come out here without the head coach. I wonder what that would do for a player. You know, you, you train preseason, training every night, uh, and then the coach isn't there on the bench on game night. Does that, you know, think that might affect the players? It, it, you know, it might. It might rattle the girls because they're used to Jason's um, 
coaching style and now Graham stepping in, he might have a different approach. I know some guard, uh, some coaches love pushing the ball up and they run with the guards where other coaches like, like going big. So I think though, Jason, knowing Jason, he's an awesome coach. He would have given Graham strict instructions <laughs> and Graham's going to follow it. Yeah, Jason certainly uh, is one of the most experienced coaches in the in the QBL. He's yeah. certainly been around for a long time and coaching at the WNBL level as well. So uh, he'll be a big loss. But I think the veteran players of the Logan Thunder will certainly um, make do without the, without their coach. And yeah. for the for the Bundaberg uh, Bears, I think Coach Roach. You know, he he's been around as well. They have some veteran players as well. So it's going to be. Uh, I think this is going to be a good opening game. Oh yeah. Well, Carly's played for years, hasn't she? And she's a machine. Even that despite her age, she never gives up. Got a great shot. All right, we're going to get set to tip. Jumping in the tip circle, Scar Reese and uh, Christina Bogue for Bundaberg. Bundy's going to be going right to left. And uh, we're going to get started here. Let's get ready for QBL 16. Don't forget to hit us up on Twitter hash using the hashtag QBL 16. And uh, we'll see if we can get you on there and answer some of your questions or comments. Logan going to work the ball around the perimeter here early. Kate Gaze putting it on the deck, gets to the rim, hits the shot, and is fouled. Quick <laughs> three-point play opportunity here for the Logan Thunder. Fantastic start for them. That's what you want, isn't it? Bring um, the ball down, swing it, attack. Yeah, and uh, we saw Gaze last week against Brisbane do a lot of her early damage from outside. She certainly can shoot the ball. Uh, that time, using that little hesitation dribble, getting the pain and finish strong. She's, a, she's been a strong player for many of years, so it's good to see back in the QBL. It's a 3-0 early lead here for Logan. We've got 33, it should be three. I think Logan will struggle inside because the two, the big players, Sarah, I know Sarah Ambrose is matching up on their big. And she normally plays the three. And Gay's open for three, that's gonna be strong. Reese skies in for the rebound. That worked well, that yeah. Reese sky, yeah. yeah, get it? Yep. <laughs> Didn't even mean that one. Inside, bucket is good for Sarah Ambrose. So 5-0 early here for Logan. Quick transition for Bundy and uh, Bo can't finish. Now Donnelly's gonna steer the ship for the Thunder. Again, Gay's wide open. She doesn't hesitate for three. That one rolls around, no good. And Bundy comes down with it. Really fast paced action here to start. It is. Bundy just need to finish at their, their end. Yeah, a couple good looks. I mean, they're getting almost too deep into the paint. Yep. Floater no good there for Bogue as well. So she's firing away. She's got the green light. She just hasn't been able to buy a bucket at, at the moment. It's always tough traveling and playing the same day. Long I know I used two. to struggle. It, and, you know, it's, it's interesting because they're in the same pool, but they're so far away. That's right. <laughs> you know, and uh, one of the things I've talked off air about is uh, Logan being in that northern pool. As a three-point attempt is good for Kelly Page. So Bundy on the Berg. On the board here early, 5-3 now the lead for Logan. Uh, but you know the re-entry of Logan into the competition last season, getting placed in that northern pool, uh, always, a bit, uh, always a bit interesting to see from the distance wise at least. That's right, I know Northside um, we're in the pool as well, but they should, I think Logan should definitely be in the pool with uh, Gold Coast. It'll be interesting to see if they ever, if they do revisit that or not. I mean, at the moment, it looks like they're very content to keep them. I think if Northside does re-enter, maybe then they'll look to bring Logan back down, especially now with the new Suncoast team. Yep. Great inside bucket there for Logan. Lead now out to 5-7-2 the lead for the Thunder. Nice entry pass inside for Bo Carly Bogue this time. Cuts the lead to three. That's, uh, yeah, that's, we, that's what's going to hurt Logan. If they don't get their rotations or split line help, Bogues is going to go to work and get easy buckets. Yeah, but we've seen both uh, the Bogue sisters really looking to do their work inside, and that's the clear, distinct advantage for Bundy, and they're doing a good job getting it inside as well, identifying their strength and, and working and playing towards that. That's right. They're getting shots up quick. Good block there by Sky Reese on Kylie Giles. Giles is blocked, and uh, three-point lead protecting. Good job there by Reese. Good recovery. Donnelly working off the screen, tries to get her feet in the paint. 10 seconds to go on the shot clock. Reese kicks it out. Good bucket there for Ambrose. Now it's a five point lead for Logan. Really, I think we see the contrast in styles where 
Bundy really looking to pass it in, where L Logan looking to get that dribble drive going. And that's the advantage for Logan. They're a lot quicker than Bundy are, so that's why they should be attacking every single time. Bug dribbles it off her foot out of bounds, so turnover there for Bundy. They trail 9-5 here early in the first with 6.32 to go in the first quarter. Don't forget we'll have uh, the men's game coming up after, directly after this one as well. We'll take a quick break in between the games. Let us get, our, let us get reset. Good pass inside for Ambrose. And Logan into double figures now. They're up 11-4. Logan have started this game fantastic, haven't they? I think you know they, they know what they want to get and, and they're getting it. Baseline jump shot, no good. Donnelly comes down with the rebound. Good pressure there by Stephanie Ray Rabine. Good pass, but Bug cannot handle it. Carly Bug can't handle the pass off a great look. No, that, that was a given. That should have been an easy make. Should have been an easy two. Bundy could come back to hurt them. They're down by... Uh, Excuse me, I have 11-4, it's 11-5, so they're down six here early. Smith working off a dribble, tries to step through, throws one up, no good. Bit of contact, we hear the bench looking for the foul, it's not there though. Cassie's so great, isn't she? She can be a point guard, but she's very tall. She can play the 3-4 spot as well. And I think uh, during the season, Cassie is gonna have to play some of that big uh, spot for Logan, just looking at their roster. Are they getting any more imports, or are they waiting for anyone to come back from college? I don't think so. I think they have their this full. full squad. I think this is their full squad. So, um, you know, it's gonna it's gonna be an interesting matchup. Ambrose gets the bucket and the foul. Great battle for early position there from Ambrose. Great recognition from Gaze. Bucket is good and the foul. And uh, I love to see the guards post up and get that position. That's right. And Michaela's looking to give it to her. It's working. Like, she just scored eight points, so it is definitely working. There's a timeout on the floor, so we're going to take one as well. The Logan Thunder leading the Bundaberg Bears 13-5 to here early on QBL TV here, presented to you by Nothing But Net Media. All right, welcome back to the Cornubia Sports Center. John Guana joined by Katie Harris. Sarah Ambrose at the line, increasing the lead now for Logan to nine. It's 14 to five here off a great three-point play opportunity uh, by Ambrose. Interesting to see no subs have come on you, have they? Nothing yet, nothing yet. Both teams battling it out. Ball is blocked, another block there for Logan. That time it, lo yeah, it looked like it was Reese again. Uh, Bundy is gonna maintain possession with 12 seconds to go on the shot clock. Inbound pass, now they work around the perimeter. They got eight seconds to go. Bogue's gonna fire away from two, that's no good. Good strong rebound there by Rabine and Bundy's gonna reset. Carly Bogue this time with a two point basket. Nice baseline jump shot. It's interesting to see, she stepped away from the key now, hasn't she? Yeah, Ray, uh, Gaze looked like she was fouled. Kinda hesitated there and missed the layup attempt. Three-point attempt that time by Christina Bogue is no good off the side of the rim. And just as you said before, no subs. We've seen our first substitution, so checking in for Logan. Got number four, Courtney Taylor, and number 13, Bridget O'Brien. Checking out is uh, Sarah Ambrose and uh, Cassie Smith. Four thirty to go in the first quarter. It's a seven-point lead here for the Logan Thunder. Gaze working off of a screen. Nearly has it stolen. Good defense there by Rabine. 
Driving the baseline is Taylor. Her pass is nearly stolen. Coming up with it, O'Brien. Her shot's blocked by Raybon. Bit of a hustle play there, but Bundy comes up with it. Baseball pass up ahead is just a bit too long. Another turnover, so things are getting a little scrappy here now. It, it is. I needed to settle it down, be patient, get it to the point guard, and then kick it up. And it's an interesting lineup here because it, it is that three-guard, almost four-guard lineup for the Logan with uh, Reese in the middle. And Sarah's just been killing it as well, so I would have left drum because she's been hot. Donnelly misses the long two. Ball goes out of bounds off a Thunder player, so they'll maintain possession. Checking in for Bundy is uh, Ashley Frampton. And uh, checking out is going to be Kylie Giles. Giles is running the point there, so let's see who's going to handle the rock for Bundy now that Giles checks out, and it is going to be Frampton. Good pressure there by Taylor. You can see trying to get in the head of the young Ashley Frampton. Bundy looking inside. Logan doing a good job keeping the Bundy on the perimeter and they forcing are. the turnover. Bundy scraps away to an open layup attempt, which is good. They definitely need to convert that one. Uh, that was a must-have if you if you wanted to keep in the game. Logan, though, really content to fire away bo on both ends, looking to push and shoot. That's right. They're not. There's no real offense structure yet, but it's been working for them at the start of the game. So. And uh, Giles just going to take a quick one, checking in uh, for Raybon. Good minutes there from Stephanie Raybon. This is a great opportunity. I love these baseline out of bounds. Good, cheap, easy too. Gaze, pump fake, dump pass. I love that. Reese just can't convert. That was a good look. Baseball pass again uh, is uh, stolen by Logan. Kate Gaze has it. Pump fake by Reese. Goes right to the bucket. She's blocked, but they're going to call a foul. That foul is going to go on Christina Bogue. That's going to be Bogue's first personal foul. I love that about Sky that she's she's a big, but her one dribble drive to the basket is so strong and hard to beat. And uh, that, you know, you you see, I, I mentioned this previously on, on previous broadcasts, but it used to be you used to use um, the dribble to set up the jump shot. Now it's the the jump shot to set up the dribble. That's right. And uh, Reese has taken a few outside shots already, so that you, ha you do have to respect that jump shot. And then she puts the ball on the deck and blows right past you. It'll be interesting to see how uh, Coach Roach manages the minutes for Bundy with the shortened roster of uh, eight players. So you really have three people on the bench. That's tough on a road trip because uh, no doubt they'll have a game tomorrow as well. And for those players to back it up again, it's always tough. And uh, people forget how big Queensland actually is. That's right. <laughs> a lot of traveling time. It's a lot, uh, it's a lot of traveling time. And uh, checking in for the first time tonight, it's going to be number 15, Ula Matuga. Just recently named as a reserve on the Australian under-17 national team. So, again, congratulations, Ula. And uh, I got to call uh, a couple of Logan Thunder games at the uh, under-18 classics, and Matuga was one of the standouts there. So you could see why she was recognized in the national team. What a fantastic opportunity for a young girl, especially for, uh, is she a Logan Junior as well? Logan Junior as well. So, you know, local talent, getting Excellent. recognized on a national level, there's nothing better than that. She looks strong out there as well, and she's definitely not nervous. She's already hitting bodies on some screens. Yeah, Matuga with the offensive rebound. Put back, no good. But you see, making an impact already. Fantastic rebound. Giles goes behind the back. Going to work the ball around the perimeter. It's with Frampton now on the left wing. She dribbles top of the key, looking inside. Again, working the ball around the perimeter. Long three is, is no, it's an air ball. Tipped back in, but it's corralled by the Logan Thunder, and they're off and running. Donnelly has it now on the left wing. Inside pass for O'Brien. Her shot is blocked. Bundy's off and running again. It's back and forth action. You can't ask for anything more. Three-point attempt, no good, but offensive rebound there by Bogue. Follow layup is good by Carly Bogue. Good spin move and layup there by Bogue. Tough she didn't get the, the foul either. O'Brien's floater is no good. And then she compounds the mistake by fouling there. Sarah Ambrose is coming back into the game. 
Ambrose have had some really nice early minutes. She's going to check in for Bridget O'Brien. So you got to expect the young uh, Ula Matuga to step into the five spot here. She's got a big challenge. She's got to stop Bogue down in the post. Yeah, Bogue doing most of the damage for Bundy. She's got six points to top score for the, for the Bears. She gets it on the block, drives baseline, kicks it out. Frampton has it. Back inside now. Bogue jump shot is no good, and Matuga has it knocked out of the bounds off of her by Stephanie Rabine. Minute nine now to go in the first quarter. Checking back in now for Logan Thunder is Cassie Smith. Going to give Michaela Donnelly a breather. It's a really flexible uh, roster that Logan has. It is, because Cassie started at the 3-4 at the start of the game. Now she's their point guard bringing it up. And yeah, again, we mentioned the versatility, and they don't get much more versatile than Cassie Smith. We, see, we will legitimately see her play one through five, if not tonight, definitely throughout the season. Kate Gaze with the steal. She's gone back up and she's drawn the foul. So Gaze misses the layup attempt. She's going to have an opportunity for a two here. She's going to go to the line for two shots. We're under a minute to go now in the first quarter, and the Logan Thunder are up five, 16 to 11. What do you like so far out of uh, out of the Thunder? You know what, their defensive pressure, Bundaberg, since the first minute, they cannot get the ball back inside the paint, and that's why Bogues has had to step out and shoot a couple of long shots. So their defensive pressure's been awesome. And they're pushing the ball a lot, so it's always attacking, uh, up fake, drive to the basket. Another offensive rebound for Matuga. She's already got two. She's only been in the minute of the game for about two minutes. Cassie Smith for three. That rolls in and out. Coming up with it is Bogue for Bundaberg. Frampton has it top of the key. She had an open jump shot. I really like Bogue's footwork. Rabine with the jump shot. That's no good. And Matuga comes down with the rebound. About 25 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Smith inside for Ambrose. Ambrose blocked there by Rabine. Ula Matuga pump fakes that three, gets her feet in the pen. Layup attempt that was just short. Coming up with it is Giles. She's going to have an opportunity for the last shot of the quarter. There's five seconds to go. Giles kicks ahead for Bogue. Bogue puts it on the deck. Kicks it out for Frampton. Long jump shot is short. That's no good. And at the end of the first quarter, it's a six-point lead for the Logan Thunder, 17 to 11. Katie, pretty good first half, uh, first quarter for both teams. Uh, there's lots of opportunity and, and gameplay still yet to play. Um, Matuga, she's very athletic, isn't she? Very athletic. Um, she's also another versatile player. So, again, giving options to uh, Coach Cheney and the Logan staff. You just have a look. You have a look at the, the roster, and again, Matuga's another one. She could play. She could play two, three, four, or five, and we've seen her at that three, four, and five spots already. That's um, right. Bundaberg, though, I think you know. Again, I was pretty impressed with Bundy as well, simply because. They have, they, they, they have the, they got into an early hole. They were down by about nine, nearly double digits, and they've battled back to a six-point deficit. That's right. It's always, you know, the first quarter jitters of, the, of any home game. And playing Logan, it's, it is a pool game. It could come down to this game, who deter, who's going to be in the finals. So I think Bundy's just warming up. Hopefully the second quarter will be very interesting. Uh, it's going to be a great second quarter. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back with second quarter action here on QBL TV, presented to you by Nothing But Net Media. Hi, my name is Jade and I play basketball for Queensland. Well, some of the great things about the Aussie Hoops program would be the younger kids, you know, developing their skills at that lower ages. The thing I love about playing basketball would be working as a team. I also love the energy and the atmosphere basketball has. Favourite training session of the week would be my club training. It's, it's more involved than just individual sessions. If a kid approached me about playing basketball for the first time, I would definitely tell them about how much fun it is. Basketball is a game for everyone and it's also an all year round sport. It doesn't matter what shape or size you are, give basketball a go.
All right, welcome back to the Cornubia Sports Center. John Guana here with Katie Harris and Katie. Uh, interesting uh, scene in the in between the quarter there. Checking out the Brisbane coach coming in, Beck Dudik, uh, looking to do some scouting. No, no doubt. You know, Brisbane's in their pool as well, so she'll be giving every opportunity she can to have a look at these these two teams. These two teams hit it out. And uh, they had a good hit out with uh, Logan Thunder last week. Uh, and Logan got up, didn't they? Logan got up, and it was um, it was an early. Um, it was a really big lead early for Logan. I think Coach Dudek would be happy with the, the improvement they made in the second half. And Beck was missing a few plays as well, wasn't she? Beck was missing a few as well as uh, I think Logan had their full squad. As uh, play gets a little bit sloppy here, it's a 17-11 uh, lead here. But, yeah, I mean, it was a, it's going to be a really interesting pull because Bundy here showing pretty, pretty good uh, as well as Logan. Brisbane has made some big improvements on last season as well. So... It's going to be a really interesting pool, and this is going to, as you said, you know, it, it, and such an early game, it really is a key game for all teams involved. That's right. And uh, Brisbane has Bundaberg tomorrow night, so you know, we might as well come out and have a look. Beck will be happy with that. The girls get a, a night off, and then they play Bundaberg tomorrow. Yeah, Michaela Donnelly with the finish there and the foul. I really like uh, Donnelly also as well. She... She can do a bit of everything. She really can put the ball on the deck. One knock against her maybe is the jump shot, um, but when you can get in the paint like she can, you don't really need, you don't really need it she, that much. She, nine times out of ten, she will finish her shot. She's also an excellent perimeter shooter as well, so you don't leave her open, otherwise she will knock it down. Bundaberg struggled to get it up. Eight-second <laughs> violation. Eight-second violation there for Bundy. And, uh, again, the defense is really amped up a bit. I think we've seen Logan on made baskets, kind of picking it up at about three quarter, really trying to force Bundy into a into a tough shot. Donnelly's going to fire from two. That's good. There so, she goes. <laughs> you don't necessarily want Michaela Donnelly heating up, and she already is starting to. That's back to back buckets uh, for Donnelly. Logan will be really looking at um, continuing on their lead here, and Bundaberg just need to keep working at it. And uh, Logan packed in that zone, so forcing Bundy from outside as Carly Bogue drains the three. And that's one way to beat the zone, isn't it, Katie? <laughs> Carly, Carly's another player. Like, she's a, you know, a unit inside the key, but then she does have a beautiful outside shot as well, so they can't leave her open. And uh, you see her right there making them pay. Gay's looking to answer with her own three. That's a bit strong. Good fight for the rebound. Good hustle there by Donnelly, but Reese loses it out of bounds off her feet. I think both teams have stepped up their defense this quarter. Both teams definitely stepping up the defense, and uh, they really have to. I guess, you know, we saw Logan kind of start to heat up a bit, and uh, Bundy just looking to try to get a couple back-to-back -back baskets. Frampton has it looking inside for Bogue on the block. She's double teamed. Back out, Frampton's going to fire for three. That's well long, and Donnelly has it now for Logan. Not looks a bad like, set. Looks like they are doubling uh, Bogey in, in, um, when she gets the ball in the paint. Well, you almost have to. Yeah. That yep. might be Logan, their instruction just to double her because she's the one that's hurting Logan at the moment. Yeah, I mean, you, 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 you almost have to do that simply because she's doing that much damage and really obviously is the focal point of the, uh, Lo excuse me, the Bundaberg offense. Paige hands off for Frampton. Now top of the key for Bug. Bug inside, looking inside there. That's for her sister, Carl, uh, Christina Bug. Foul called on Cassie Smith. I think it was a holding foul. Yeah, that's a tough matchup inside. The Bug sisters can definitely play in the paint, and uh, Cassie just gave up really good position there to Carly. Inbound pass tipped and stolen by Donnelly, streaking to the basket. A lot of contact. Ball stripped and out of bounds. No call. That was an interesting one. <laughs> no call there. Michaela is questioning the referee. She's not happy, is she? <laughs> Did the hard work. It's always interesting. I mean, yeah, you, you want the referees to, to let them play. Um, That's right. Yep. So you got to try and find the balance. It's a tough call for the referees. But, uh, you know, that one there, there's definitely contact. Good offensive rebound there by Ambrose. Gaze puts it on the deck, pull up jump shot is strong and coming down with it's Carly Bogue. Again, Logan are doubling their teammates, aren't they? 
Full court, a bit of trapping and pressure from Bundy. Page puts it on the deck, jump shot no good, but she's fouled, and she's gonna go to line for two shots. Fouls on Kate Gaze. Yeah, Kate, that's gonna be her first personal. Logan's got two team fouls. Bundy's only got the one. No real foul trouble for either no. team. Same in the first quarter, defense has been hard. Bundy just needs to keep attacking because Logan struggle, they don't have the height to stop the plays inside. Make it 16 now, so 22-16 the lead. Anyone's and, uh, game still, isn't it? It really is. I mean, this is very similar to what happened in the Brisbane game last week uh, where Logan looked to be the better team but just kind of let the opposition hang around a bit. Uh, Ambrose fires. They're going to call that one a two. That was a long two there. I think her foot must have been just on the line. Just on the line, but again, we see that three-quarter court press. Cassie and uh, Michaela are so long. That's what's going to hurt Logan if they don't get back on their defense. Bogue will convert like she just did then. Two points to her. Yeah, great look there by Bogue. She followed up her own miss with the bucket. Ball tipped out of bounds. Kate Gaze can't handle the pass there from Scott Reese. Reese going to get a seat on the bench. Checking in is Bridget O'Brien. Checking in for Bundaberg is uh, Christina Bogue. And checking out is going to be Stephanie Raybon. And uh, good minutes there again by Raybon. She's doing it all defensively. Give her the shot, she's going to take it and hit it as well. Paige working off the screen. Corner for Giles, her three is good. You cannot leave Kylie out. I've known that for the last <laughs> couple of years. She's a whippet, she runs from you know, basket to basket and she can shoot the shot. Good inside out action here. Gay is going to fire for three, that's good. Again, <laughs> she's another one you can't leave wide open. Love it though, goes inside and right out for the three. That's right. Sarah could have converted that, but she saw Gay's calling for it. Frampton picks up her dribble. Bundy looking inside, bogue to bogue. Now Giles on the wing again, working it around. Page is going to fire for three. That's short. And Donnelly corrals the rebound. Logan up seven here, 27 20. Donnelly looking to kick it out. She's fouled. It's good to see Michaela pushing the ball because they do have the speed to beat Bundaberg and they can draw some quick fouls, get into the hoop. Yeah, and Donnelly, that's one of her strengths, is her speed as well. Uh, you, you see it every time, she, <laughs> every time she gets the ball, she really just wants to get going. That's right, push it down the court. Kate Gay's feeling it, misses the three. Bridget O'Brien fighting for the rebound, but it comes up to um, Bogue. Kick ball on Bridget O'Brien, and Bundy's going to maintain possession. Five on nine to go here in the first half. Seven point lead for Logan. Bundy's needs to just keep chipping away at this seven points. Quick, easy baskets. And again, we see that trap. Donnelly shuffling her feet. They're going to call a defensive foul. Donnelly thought she was Mc hooked, and we can Michaela see Giles. not happy. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, yeah, she definitely was, was rotting her hip there, so you got to call that, that one. That's right, yeah. But I like the trap. I like the aggressive play for Logan because it plays, you know, it's a smart coaching maneuver because you're playing to your strengths. That's you have right. depth in the guards. If you pick up some fouls, you know, you roll the next guard in. Frampton has it tipped out of bounds. I'm gonna say it went off the hands of Sarah Ambrose. Looked to me like it went off of Frampton. Yeah, well, Courtney Taylor's checking back in. Michaela's gonna have a quick spell. And timeout. Timeout on the floor with uh, about 4.53 to go in the first half. Logan up seven, so we'll take a quick break as well. You tuning into QBL basketball here on Nothing But Net Media.
Welcome back to the Cornubia Sports Center. As the Logan Thunder host the Bundaberg Bears, I'm John Gorn. I'm joined in the commentary booth by Katie Harris. And Katie, it's a seven point lead here for Logan. What, what's going on on the court here for the Thunder to maintain this lead? Well, I think they just need to keep applying their defensive pressure. Just, just like that, Courtney Taylor with a quick steal. Bridget pulled up for a shot and made. <laughs> Great. Again, they're putting pressure on Sarah Ambrose and Courtney Taylor up the court. Yeah, and Bundy really hasn't shown that they can handle the pressure, so you just got to stick with it. That's right. Yeah, as, as a coach, when you see something is successful, you just want to stay with it. I think Graham does need to stay with it as well for the rest of the game. It's a nine-point lead now, 29-20. Giles going to fire for two. It's a nice-looking jump shot from the lefty. There's no really defensive pressure from Bundaberg, is there, compared to Logan? Do you have? Do you, do you think that has anything to do with the the depth on the roster and the amount of travel? I think so, yeah. And only having eight, uh, seven plays, that that is very tough. Yeah, we got set, we got eight players on the roster, but we really only, I don't know where the eighth one is. She might be <laughs> injured, or I'm not sure. Maybe, um, but yeah, seven players, so it's going to be you know a lot of. You got to pick and choose how, how you manage the roster at this point with only two substitutions. And you look at Logan, I mean, they've got, they, they need extra seats that's for all right, the people yeah. that got on the bench. <laughs> I think that's definitely the difference. Um, the, the couple points in it that Logan are applying so much pressure, Bundaberg can't get the ball up the court, and then they're just settling for those outside shots. Yeah, and again, when, when Logan does get back in the half court, they are packing the paint, so they're daring Bundy to beat them from, from deep. That's right. Bit of behind the ball, behind the back dribble action there. Giles gets a screen from Bogue. She goes inside, but the pass stolen there by Bridget O'Brien. Gaze picks up her dribble, gonna hand off to O'Brien for three, that's good. There she goes, that's her <laughs> shot I'm used to seeing. Good look there and a nice, you know, it's a good look by Gaze to get her teammate involved as well. Giles gonna be fouled there by Courtney Taylor. Taylor again, Probably just just needed that one extra little shuffle yeah, to get her to the side. Across, yep. Logan are not happy. And that's the second time they were looking for that hooking, uh, that that offensive foul. I, I don't know. Is it is there a foul called hooking? Uh, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> not technically, but I think Bundaberg are doing a really good job. Logan just need to have quicker feet and beat them to the spot. Yeah, it's great pressure. She's doing a good job, but then she just lets her off the hook at that last second. And like you said before, Logan do have the luxury to have quick subs. They do have a lot of guards on their roster. Another sloppy turnover there for Bundaberg. Ambrose gets it ahead now over to Donnelly. Donnelly doing the smart play and getting her team reset. Bit of contact in the paint there as O'Brien goes down. Gaze goes through the defense. Hits Thanks, the shot, and she's fouled. It was, I thought she got herself in trouble there, but she kind of just powered through the, the lay of attack. The shot, yep, and, and makes it. And that's Kate Gaze, that's one of her signature moves. Up fake, attack the hoop. And uh, she's using it to perfection. Gaze on the night. She's got seven points. Make it eight. So it's 35-22 the lead now. That's the way to break the press. Go right in the middle. Bogue inside to her sister. There you go. That's what they need. They need to kick it out wing, and then the big need to um, curl. Curling. It's big to big pass too. Hey, you yeah. get you know, you Bogue kind of goes on in that that short corner there, brings the defender out with the jump. You got to respect the jump shot, then you get that action going through the paint. And the two sisters, like they are big bigs, and they're unstoppable. Logan can't compete with them or match up with them. Christina Bogue hits the uh, first free throw, so that's cutting the lead now. Got too much action, too much on my score sheet here. This is the second though. It's, it, you know, you, we've seen Ambrose go in the paint. They're really looking to establish her inside. She, she's playing big tonight. Michaela for the three, successful. Big three there by Michaela Donnelly. Again, 
that inside and then out of action works to success for Logan. They've got the 15 point lead now, we're under two minutes to go. Another turnover there by Bundaberg. Skip pass up ahead. Layup attempt, no good. Great offensive rebound there by Ambrose. Gaze driving baseline. Offensive foul, yes, yeah, she did bring her elbow out and push the player away. So Bundaberg's gonna come up with the ball. Offensive foul called there on Kate Gaze. So it's gonna be Gaze's second personal foul and that's the Logan Thunder uh, fifth team foul. Cassie and Sky back in and Ambrose and Kate take a break. So Bundaberg, or Logan now uh, in the bonus. You don't shoot on the offensive foul though. And then, I'm sorry, that was Gaze's third personal foul, so she's gonna have to check out. Cassie with the steal looking to push the ball. And another turnover there, and turnover starting to really hurt Bundaberg here in this run from Logan. They're up 15 now, 38-23. Too many turnovers could really, really damage any opportunity you have of a win. Got eight seconds to go on the shot clock. Donnelly gets a screen. Hands off for O'Brien. She's going to fire for three. That's strong. No good. Coming down with it is Christina Bogue. Pass tipped out of bounds by a hustling Bridget O'Brien. There's going to be a timeout on the floor. So we're going to take one as well with just about a minute to go here in the first half. The Logan Thunder up 15. 28-23, excuse me, 38-23 on Basketball Queensland QBL Television presented to you by Nothing But Net Media. Back with you here at the Cornubia Sports Center. Pass out to Reese for three, that's a bit strong. Fight for the rebound and Boat comes up with it. It's stolen though, pass goes to O'Brien, her layup is good. Funderburg did not need that lead into half time. They really need to score here. And turnover's really killing Bundaberg. We'll try and get some stats here at the half. Uh, but it's a 17 point deficit now for Bundy. And Frampton looking to run the show. Raybon kicks it out for Frampton. It's about eight seconds to go on the shot clock. They go inside, that's a really tough angle to pass from. They're gonna say it went out of that bounds off the hands of a Bundaberg player. So Logan's gonna have an opportunity for the final shot. I, I reckon they will come down for a three. I'm gonna call it Michaela. All right, let's see what you got, Katie. Katie's predicting the Michaela three. You know the ball's going to be in Donnelly's hands at some point here. You go. She's cleared everyone out. She's either going to drive and kick to Cassie or looks for Sky. Good roll to the basket. It was a good look. Just Doesn't not a strong. Yeah. Just not a strong shot there by Reese, but a strong first half for the Logan Thunder, particularly that second half of the second quarter as they run out to a 17-point lead. Uh, Katie, what did you think of that first half action? You know what, the, the first part was awesome. Bundaberg just need to step up, control. Um, they need to get a big to the middle so they can break their press. But Logan just need to put the pedal to the metal and just, you know, continue on with the points. And it looked like kind of Logan dropped back into that 2-3 zone and really kind of packed it in that. It was really there. aggressive. Like they had a player coming and doubling the big and then that's what's going to stop him because Bogue's the only player that's really scoring. 
So if you're a Bundaberg at halftime, what are the adjustments you need to make against that aggressive uh, trap and then drop them back into the zone? I think the first thing is they definitely need to get a post to the, to the middle of the court to bring to settle the point guards. And then they need to look in. They're, they're settling for a lot of shots around the key, so they definitely need to look in for Bogue and then go to work inside because right. Logan can't match up with them. Yeah, well, let's see what, they, what adjustments they can make at halftime. It is halftime here, so we're going to duck out. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back with second half action here at the Cornubia Sports Center. It's the Logan Thunder leading the Bundaberg Bears 40 to 23 on QBL TV presented by Nothing But Net Media.
All right, we're back live with you here at Cornubia Sports Center. John Guana joined by Katie Harris. Nothing But Net Media presents you QBL Basketball 2016. Uh, we're trying to get some drinks there, Katie. The uh, lineup was crazy, so hopefully something will come soon. The crowd's starting to roll <laughs> in, which is good to see, so hopefully the men's game will be alive. Yeah, it'll be, it should be a great game as well, the men's game. A uh, pretty good one on our hands here. Take a quick look at some of, some of the stats uh, for both teams. Katie, maybe you start us off with, uh, with the Thunder. The Thunder, yep. So the top point scorer is Sarah Ambrose, and she's got 11, followed by Kate Gaze. Uh, for the Bundaberg Bears, we have Bogues with 11, and then the next uh, best scorer is Kylie with five. So they're going to struggle. They need to get it into Bogues and finish strong around the rim. And we say, that as, we, <laughs> as you mentioned that, they go right inside to Bogues. Uh, 4-2, so Bundy, the first team on the board here in the second half, cutting the lead to 15. Bundaberg have won the rebounds, 25-18 to 18 at half time. But the turnover, there, that's the problem. Bundaberg had 18 to Logan's four. Yeah, Smith turns it over. Bogue with the steal. She goes behind the back, tries to get it over to Giles. Giles has to bring it back out. Good defense there by Carly Bogue. She's going to fire from three. That's a bit short. No good. So it's going to be really interesting to see in the second half how much energy uh, B Bundy has to really ride out the rest of the, the half. The third quarter is always the toughest I find as a player. Yeah. Oh, oh, what a shot. <laughs> in and out and then in again for Scar Reese. That's a three-pointer. So the lead now back up to 18, 43-25. That was just a catch and shoot. The shot clock was about to run out. Pass inside. See Logan really con con collapsing when the ball goes inside. They, they have no choice, and I, I suspect that's going to be something that we see out of this Logan team, not just tonight, but throughout the season. That's right, yeah. I think that's how they're going to win their games because they don't have dominant bigs, so they're going to have to double to st stop the big players from scoring. Yeah, I wonder, uh, again, if Ca if Cassie Smith can entice her sister out of uh, retirement. But you, know, you know what? She's here, actually. <laughs> she's in the crowd, so she's going to be here every home game. She should suit up. I mean, maybe maybe she could work something out where she only plays the home yeah, games. Yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> I'm sure Logan, uh, the Thunder, wouldn't mind that as well. What's better than one Smith than two? That's right. Interesting to see. Well, I think it's a, a smart call by Graham. They've set Kate Gaze to start with, maybe because of her personal fouls. Yeah, she's got she's got three, and she is the top scorer in the in the game so far for the Thunder. Actually, I'm sorry, I should say that she's the second leading scorer. Is Sarah Ambrose is leading them with 11. Donnelly has to force to shoot a jump shot. It's a bit short, but it goes out of bounds off Bundy. Inbound play now. Reese now outside for Taylor. Again, Logan working the ball around the perimeter. Taylor has it. She's going to have to fire from three. That's, oh, they're going to say it was a two. two. Yeah. Good shot there, though, by Taylor. And pretty good offense there by Logan also. Courtney's another one that you need to put a hand up, otherwise she will knock the open shot down. Good talk by Sarah Ambrose in there. Ah, oh, good big to big pass. Ooh. It's going to be a foul on the play. That's a late call. Michaela is not happy. That's a very late call there. Michaela Donnelly picking up the personal foul. That's going to be her second personal. Let's see what Christina Bogue can do from the free throw line. She hits the first. I don't know if she's missed one tonight, Katie. Has she? From the foul line. No. Yeah, no. She's perfect four for four from the charity stripe 100%. after those two. Tell you, it'd be, it's not, not bad having a, <laughs> a combination of the Bogues for you. They, they are definitely tough together. And they play, they play well together. They really look, you know, they're not forcing anything. They're looking to get themselves involved, but also looking to involve the team as well, which is a great attribute to have in a player. That's right. Bogues bringing the ball up the court. Yeah, I mean, she's showing it all, isn't she? She is. <laughs> yeah, she's going to fire from three. That's good. 
Beautiful shot. Uh, they're going to call it two. They're going to call it two. So 45-29 the lead now uh, for Logan. Donnelly using the dribble to create space for Taylor. She hits another three. There you go. You cannot leave her open. Yeah, that's back-to-back -back threes there for Taylor. A silly and pass goes off Kylie's head. There was a fumble. And then uh, Bundy lose the ball out of bounds. The turnovers again starting to creep back into the game here for Bundy. And that is evident. 18 to 4 at half time. That is where they're going wrong, wrong the Bundaberg Bears. And uh, you have a young backup point guard here in Ashley Frampton. Uh, Frampton did a pretty solid job. Had a couple of turnovers, but looks like Coach Roach is going to go with um, the veterans there. Donnelly misses the float. A good rebound there by Kylie Giles. Bundaberg looking to push it, which is which is great. Oh, good nice block. By, good block there by Reese. Bundy recovers, but they can't finish. That's got to be Reese's at least her third block of the game. Yeah. Donnelly now has it on the wing. Gets a screen from Ambrose. She's going to fire away. That's two. Kayla's shot. I'll tell you. Donnelly, when she hits that jump shot, she is just super tough. That, she's I'm, hit a few tonight. She, she's hit a few tonight, and that's just going to open up the, the paint for her as well. Kayla with 10 points so far in this game. Boat goes to work. Baseline foul by Sarah Ambrose. She'll go to the line for two. That's what they need to do. She needs to rip it baseline, go up strong. And like I said, Sarah's... No offense to it, but she's not as tall as Vogue, and that's why she struggles. Yeah, and uh, again, if if she she's not getting, she's doing a good job forcing Vogue to the outside. That's right. Yep. But Their she's not using. Needs to come across. <laughs> yeah. She's just not getting the help that she needs on on the on the on the other side. Vogue converts her first foul shot. That's Carly Vogue. So you got Carly at 14 and Christina Vogue at 12. And they are doing damage. Combined, the two of them have 22 of the 31 Bundaberg points. And uh, they need to get a couple of quick stops here. Couple and of then quick convert the en at the other end. Yeah, it's, a, it's really tough, though. I, you know, if you're if you're a coach, uh, Darren Roach, what do you do to make that adjustment? Because you don't really necessarily want to go too hard and pressure it too much because of that short bench. That's right. So short, sharp stops. Great position there by Bogue. She and gets she the converts. finish and the foul. And Logan Bench not happy at that. Uh, I mean, they're looking for it at the other end, but they're not getting that kind of deep post position that uh, Bogue had on that one. And a great entry pass there by Frampton. The Bogue sisters have come out ready to play this, this quarter. Miss foul shot. She gets the ball back. The other Bogue sister shoots. <laughs> Christina with the with the jump shot there off the Carly Bug free throw miss. Donnelly goes behind the back, has it stolen there. Uh, that was Kelly That's Page tough. using the basket and the finish. Great there job there. Timeout by the Logan bench. They haven't got it though. Yeah, they got the ball in. The, they got the ball in into quickly and Page again now with Another the second steal. steal. Again, going to the basket. Donnelly, though, steps up and picks up the charge. Michaela is awesome at that she body on the line <laughs> every time. She, she loves to step up. We saw her try and take a couple in the preseason game last week versus Brisbane. But the Logan Thunder do get that time in, timeout in, so we're going to take one as well. It's a 50-35 to 35 lead here in the third quarter for the Logan Thunder. We're going to take a quick break with you. QBL TV here on Nothing But Net Media.
All right, back with you here from the Cornelia Sports Complex. Regan Baker in the production seat for us tonight. Katie Harris and John Guarna on the call. And it's been a pretty good battle so far here between the Logan Thunder and the Bundaberg Bears. Fundy, you know, is down by 15, but they're kind of hanging around. Logan, you know, just hasn't really been able to kick into that second gear so far. I think Bundy started this this quarter what they needed. They needed to come out, then he gets some quick scores and quick stops, and they brought it back to 15. As Gaze hits the free throw. Kate Gaze does such a good job getting to the hoop, drawing the foul. Yeah, I think uh, Gaze... You know, she's a, the Gay's name is a familiar name for everybody in basketball here in Australia. Um, she came off of a fairly successful college career over in the U.S. college system and made an impact in the WNBL right away. And uh, she's certainly a talented player. She's going to have a big impact for Logan this season. She's been very wanted. I know she's played a couple of seasons in Seabull, so now she's in the QBL, which has been great to see. Yeah, a bit of back and forth action here. Great move and nice footwork there by Reese to finish with the left hand. I like the entry pass too. Oh. That's what Bundaberg <laughs> need. Quick passes, Vogue to Vogue, and they score. Yeah, that, again, that big to big uh, pass really has been working well for Bundy, particularly on that wing action. It's a wing entry to the post. Yep. And it is interesting to see a big pass in it in, but they're keeping the floor spread. Gaze fires from three. She hasn't really been able to get on, on, off track or on track from beyond the arc. But, I think uh, that's been lucky for Bundaberg, hasn't it? <laughs> it sure has. She can do some damage out there. Page comes down and drains the three. Back and forth we go here. It's a 12-point lead now. And how's the, how about the impact of Kelly Page for Bundaberg She's the come on both ends? Yeah, a couple of defensive stops and converted. She did get the charge just then. But you got to like the aggressive play. I mean, you've you got to reward it as Gaze answers with her there own. There you go. There's a three. Cassie Smith is about to take court. Yeah, Cassie again. You know, she, she's, a, she's the kind of player, uh, Katie, that... She can certainly have an impact on the stat sheet, but she does everything and does everything well. Just the one percenters, the hustle, the boxing out, the defense. Yeah, Carly Bogue with the, with the bucket there for Bundy. Back and forth, it's 57-44 with about 2.20 to go in the third quarter. Kate Gaze, there Woo! she goes. Yeah, Gaze just firing away from three there. That was a deep three, half a meter behind the three-point line. Yeah, and you know, she's got a she has got a great jump shot. Really nice. It's just fundamentally sound. Trapped in the corner, and Gaze comes up with the steal. Gets it over to Courtney Taylor. She's off and running. But they she shuffled the feet there. Donnelly's gonna fire for two. That's no good. Frampton getting on her, getting on the court. And Bundy great hustle there by Bundy. Bundy really needs to stop Kate Gaze now. She's hot. She knows she's hot. She's gonna keep shooting the ball until she misses. Right, it's going to be interesting to see. They're going to have to go to Gaze again as Bogue tries to answer, and she does with her own three. Carly Bogue from deep, She's showing the full repertoire. Yeah, inside the paint and from out. 21 points now for Bogue. She gets her hands on that pass that winds up with Kelly Page. That's Page. what Bundaberg needs, those quick stops, and then they need to convert down the other end. Great stops. Yeah, they could go for another Bogue three here. That would cut the lead to 10. Christina goes to Carly and a hip check there by Scar Reese. That's going to be definitely called. Definitely a blocking foul. <laughs> yeah, definitely a foul. Not, not, no intent in that one there. As Reese just tried to beat her to the spot and it was hip on hip. Couple of quick subs. Sky, Taylor, and Bridget come off for the Logan Thunder. Sarah and Rose steps on Cassie and then Kaylin plays her first minutes for the game. Yeah, Kaylin Forrester is a QBL veteran as well. Uh, she's. Uh, Gonna, let's see, she's going to have to man the middle now in this 2-3 zone of uh, Logan. You see Mikhail Donnelly on the lower wing. Page shoots over the, the zone, misses. There you go, great box out and a rebound for Caitlin. Yeah, good job there by Forrester. Gay is going to step into it too. She was too close to the basket that time. There you go. <laughs> All right, we're under a minute now, about 45 seconds to go in the third quarter. It's a 13-point lead here for Logan. Bundaberg need a score here to stay in the game for the last quarter. Bogue puts it on the deck. Now Giles has it, working the ball around the perimeter. There's five seconds to go on the shot clock. Page gets a double screen. She's going to have to fire away. That jump shot's a bit short. Fighting for it is Forrester. Good hustle there. And Donnelly recognizing the clock. There is she no shot clock. She will settle it down here. 
What do you think? You I called three last time. Oh, you know what? I reckon <laughs> well, Sierra's going to come up. She's going to attack the hoop. And if she gets caught, she's going to kick to Cassie for the three or she's going to finish. Goes away from the screen. Does Donnelly. Throws it up with the right hand. It's no good. Unlucky not to get a foul there. A bit unlucky. There was a bit of contact. Bundy just going to let the clock run out on the third quarter. So heading into the stretch run, it's a 13-point lead here for Logan, 60-47. to 47. We're going to take a break, and we'll come back with exciting fourth-quarter action here on QBL-TV, presented by Nothing But Net Media. All right, welcome back to the Cornelius Sports Center. QBL TV presented by Nothing But Net Media here with you. And the Logan Thunder leading the Bundaberg Bears 60-47 to in the fourth quarter. Katie Harris joined, uh, joining me tonight. And, Katie, it was a pretty good third quarter for both teams. It was kind of a, a, a bit of back-and-forth runs. Uh, you know, Logan got hot for a minute, then Bundy got hot again. But I Logan still has the double-digit lead. I think Bundy definitely did step up their game. But, you know, this is the fourth quarter. All or nothing now. Michaela with a great steal, goes to the bucket and gets fouled. She'll go to the line for two. Great steal there by Donnelly. And I, I love watching Michaela Donnelly play because she always, she, she doesn't mind the contact. She almost plays towards the contact. That's right. It was a good foul though by Kylie because she didn't want Michaela to get the two points and now she goes to the line. And Donnelly goes to the line for two shots. That's Kylie's third foul as well. Yeah, and that's good. that could be tough there for uh, Carly. Actually, no, they're going to say it's her fourth. So four personal fouls there by Carly Bogue, and there's nothing. It could be nothing worse than losing a Bogue for the Bundaberg team. That's right. 15-point lead now for Logan. Good job there by Stephanie Rabine. Finishing through the foul, she got the bucket, she's gonna to go to the line for the three point play opportunity. She needs to convert here, then they need great defense for the stop and another score. I mean, it's such a cliche, but you need to put, you need, I, I don't know, uh, you, you always have, defense does win the game for you. I mean, you can't expect to just continually outgun teams um, because eventually you're gonna stop missing, making those shots. And you got to be able to play defense. And I think Logan's showing tonight that they can play defense, and they've shown a lot of different looks, which has been impressive. And Bundy's been good, too, as Gaze steps through and lays it in. But Bundy has, has shown the ability to play defense at times. At at, that's right, at times. I find myself saying that a lot now, that defense definitely does win games, and Logan have done that tonight. Frampton's going to fire for three. That's short. And a good rebound there by Caitlin Forrester. Gay's looking inside for Ambrose. Ambrose double teamed. She finds a cutting Forrester. They're going to call Forrester for the offensive foul there. She kind of got herself twisted around and kind of leaned in with the shoulder. She should have put it for a nice little jump shot. She was open at the start. That was a good look there by Ambrose. And 
I like what Logan's doing with Ambrose in the in the paint, and she's done that that, that enough damage inside that uh, Bundaberg has been forced to double team her. She's played really well today. She came out and got a quick eight points in the first quarter, and she's been solid for the rest. Yeah, she's got the tough defensive assignment of uh, Carly Bogue as well. Bundaberg are settling for a lot of outside shots, so it's going to hurt them. They need to get the ball in the side of the paint and then finish. I think that's the strategy of the Thunder as we see Ambrose hit the jump shot there. But I think Logan really is daring Bundaberg to beat them from outside. They're not letting them that's get into right. the paint. And uh, it was something that we saw last week. Logan did that, but Logan actually had Brisbane do that to them, and Logan struggled from outside. Uh, you know, it, it, until a team shows you that they can consistently hit that outside jump shot, you're going to let them fire away, aren't you? You've got to be a Seth Curry, don't you? <laughs> Those shots down all the time. Unfortunately, there's only one of them. I mean, <laughs> if, they ever, if they ever get that cloning thing down, we might see a few more Steph Currys around. Good jump shot there by Frampton. Cuts the lead now to 14. Gaze puts it on the deck, gets to the rim. She's fouled. Can't finish, but she'll go to line for two shots. She's a great attacking player, isn't it? She's got to the line so many times tonight. Yeah, again, it's she. she's that, she, I, I don't like to, it's not a comparison, but it is that Steph Curry action where you have to respect her jump shot That's that right. much yep. that you have to close out and you're con consistently closing out too strong so she goes right past you. And that's a little bit like Michaela as well. Like she's hit a lot of open shots today, but she's also attacked and got it in. Yeah, and, and you know, you, it, it looks, they make it look easier than what it is, recognizing that strong close out and, and being able to attack it. Bundy goes over the top of the trap. Now they're going to set in the half court. Frampton has it on the left wing, working the ball around the perimeter, trying to get it inside to Raybine. Her jump shot no good, but Bogue comes up with it. Bogue finds Giles, kicks it back out to Bogue. She's going to fire for three. That's a bit strong. And Reese comes down with it for the Thunder. Cassie's going to settle it down here. Yeah, that's She's a smart point guard. Just a smart play there. I mean, the, the pace has been a bit frenetic. Gaze. Kate Gaze, again, unlucky there. Could have been a foul. Yeah, a lot of contact on that one. You, you know, if you're, if you're Logan, you have a 15-point lead as Donnelly hits the floater. Great job increasing the lead to 17. But do you start trying to work the clock here with 7.30 to go? I mean, do you look to, or do you keep going for a few more minutes? I think, yeah, keep going for definitely for a few more minutes. It's been that comfortable kind of double-digit lead since really the second quarter. Well, like I said, Logan can't just really put him away. And it doesn't uh, look like Graham's going to take off his starties. He's going to keep putting the foot down, and he wants a big lead. Yeah, Berg loses it inside. So another turnover there for Bundy. 69-52 the lead here. Thunder up 17. Good kick around. Yeah, Sky Reese. for the three, there she goes. Reese in rhythm, drains a three. It's now 20 points the lead for Logan. Logan have a, you know, numerous plays that if you don't respect their shot, they will knock it down. Yeah, and uh, again, you know, that also comes off really good ball movement. We saw a ball reversal, and then they worked the ball around to their perimeter. But we saw about two or three players had open looks there, but they moved it to Reese, who had the better look. That's right. I think that's a sign, you know, that's a really good sign for a team this early in the season to have that type of ball movement. I was just thinking that you can tell that they've been training for a while, they're used to each other, and they're not selfish basketballers. Courtney Taylor's going to sub in. Kate Gaze looks like she's going to have a spell. It was yeah. Michaela's foul there. Gaze has 21. She it, stepped right up, hasn't she? Uh, she's been fantastic. She's a, She's been a fantastic addition to the Logan Thunder team and uh, going to be an exciting addition for, for the competition as well. You know what, I thought they would struggle tonight with their height, but despite their height, they've played really well. They're very versatile. Some teams may pose a different, a different challenge for them. You know, Bundy has the Bogue sisters who, are, who have shown that they can play inside and out, but Bundy kind of went away from that. They did, yeah. I, and I think that it's a credit to Logan that they, that they did go away from that because Logan double teamed and that double team was successful. Logan's hustle, when it was on, it was on. And then nine times out of 10, they did get the steal or the turnover. A great rebound there by Ambrose. Donnelly gets in the paint. They work it again around the perimeter. Fantastic ball movement. Once, once again, winds up with a nice jump shot. This time it's Ambrose hitting. And it's a 22 point lead for Logan. Good pressure there by Taylor. Entry pass to Bogue. She's double teamed again. She's forced to kick it out. 
Charles puts it on the deck. They're working around to Frampton. Now Bogue, baseline jump shot, hits the side of the backboard. She was frustrated, she got it back. Frampton inside for two, that's good. Bogue nearly gave up on it. She got lucky she on that lucky one. She was lucky that one. She was frustrated, she missed a shot, and then she had it back in her hands. 20 points, the lead now. We're under six to go here in the game. Donnelly gonna step into a long two, that's good. That's her shake and bake. She's so good at that. Gets the defense player offside, and then one dribble, shot. It's not easy for a right-hander to go left and step into a jump shot. What are the keys to that sh shot off the dribble? Because that's a really hard shot, dribbling left and jump shotting. I think that's what makes her such a great play. She's very versatile, has a strong left and right hand, and she's comfortable. She can put it down on the left-hand side and go up for the shot. Yeah, Ambrose finishes with the left there as well. 24 points the lead now for Logan, and things starting to get a little bit more comfortable for the Thunder. But we see Kate Gay's getting ready to check back in She's for the Logan. On, yeah. I thought we might have seen the last of her, but again, early season, it's only round one. You still want to build that co continuity as uh, Smith misses the three, but somehow winds up with uh, Courtney Taylor. It is interesting because, you know, most coaches do put their the development players or the, you know, ninth and tenth players on, but it's good to see that Logan want to continue their lead and work with the team. Yeah, timeout's going to be taken here by the Bundaberg Bears with the Logan Thunder up 26, 80 to 54. We're under five minutes to go now in the game. We're gonna take a quick break as well. You're watching QBL TV presented to you by Nothing But Net Media. All right, welcome back to Cornubia Sports Complex. As the Logan Thunder take on the Bundaberg Bears. John Guana here, I'm joined by Katie Harris in the booth, as well as uh, Regan Baker. Regan doing a great job on the production. It's an 80 to 54 lead here for Logan with about 440 to go in the game. Giles fires for three and that's good for Bundy. It's 80 to 57 now the lead. And let's see what Logan does. Logan on the court, they've got Gaze, Donnelly, Ambrose, Taylor, and Ula Matuga. Matuga has it now. She drives right past the defender, throws up the floater, it's there good. As we said earlier, Matuga has just got named in the under 17 national team as a reserve player. Not intimidated at all at the QBL level. She definitely does look like a big, but she's not. She's very athletic, can get to the hoop, and does finish strong. Yeah, she does a great job on the glass. We saw her earlier in the game grab two consecutive offensive rebounds. She's an active defender as well. It's an exciting player to watch, not only now, but in the future. She's only going to continue to get better. Quick board, passes to Michaela. Donnelly playing with a lot of confidence here in, the, in this game. As, as you know, she, Looks like when she hits a few shots, especially from the outside, the confidence levels go up. Uh, gonna call a foul there on Ambrose as Christina Bogue lost the dribble there. That looked like a bit of a bailout, but uh, nonetheless. Sarah was looking for the carry because <laughs> she did fumble there. Yeah, that's that, that's that du double dribble. It got knocked up in the air with one hand, she hit it with the other. What do you think, referee Regan? Travel? No, he's not gonna comment. He's not gonna beg out his fellow referees. Will, Will, you're lucky you don't have the mic on, Regan. We'll, 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 they would have heard what you really said there. <laughs> we won't tell them. 82-57, to go in the game here. Don't forget, guys, we will have the Logan Thunder men versus the Bundaberg Bulls on a separate stream on the Basketball Queensland YouTube channel. We're gonna turn, we'll, we'll finish this stream and then we'll go to the next stream about five, 10 minutes before the tip, all right? 
So don't forget to check that one out as well. I'm looking forward to that game. Logan do have a tough team this season, and Bundaberg have always been strong. Yeah, Bundy uh, is going to be focused around uh, William Shackelford as, as usual. He's a uh, machine. If, when, he's hot, when he's hot, he is hot, and you need to stop him because he's another player that is lethal in the paint but then can shoot the three as well. Yeah, he can do it all from outside, but I think, you know, I'm, I'm very excited to see what Logan Thunder men have. You know, I thought they were competitors last year. I think, uh, you know, I, I don't know the team last year. I don't know if they just didn't gel as well as I thought they would, um, but this year I'm expecting big things again from Logan. I think. You know, talent-wise, they can match up with anybody in the oh, competition. Definitely. Case comes back out and hits another three-pointer. Wondering if she just wants to pad the stats now. It's a 28-point lead. Bogue misses it, then has it stripped by Ambrose. Bogue's just really tired. I mean, they've been working hard, the Bundaberg team here. And Both you can just have played like the whole game, haven't they? I don't think they've come out. Matuga fires for three. That rolls in and out. That would have got the crowd jumping on that one. Vogue to Vogue pass. Yeah, great Converts. pass there from Christina to Carly. I love to see that pass when they don't expect it or they're not looking, and then it's there, right there for them. I think that's one of Bundaberg's uh, strengths this game. Donnelly hitting Matuga, rolling to the rim. She steps through the defender Beautiful and lays it finish. up an inch. Has the footwork there from oh, Ula Matuga. Fantastic. She'll be a, a player to look out for in the near future. Yeah, I mean, I think she I think she has an opportunity to make an impact for the Thunder off the bench this season. Great look there from Redvine to uh, Bogue. Bogue with the finish. And it's that inside pass. We see them getting that in interior. Right. Yeah, you, once they get into the paint, Bundy's doing a good job. They're just struggling to get it there. Gaze thought about a three. She's going to bring it back out. Now we're under two to go. 87-61 the lead. Gaze gets a lot of contact. Ambrose with the offensive rebound. Throws up the hook shot. That's good. And then um, Coach is going to go to the bench. Checking in for the Logan Thunder. It's number seven, Jess Taylor. And number 12, Asia Pepe. And checking out is going to be Courtney Taylor and Michaela Donnelly. So the, I'd say their nights would be finished. I think so. They both played excellent tonight. They've got a good lead for their team. Their work's done. Yeah, Donnelly finishes the night with 16 points. Charles has it. No look pass inside for Bogue. Layup attempt is good. Referee is blowing the whistle. They call it. Not sure what they. I don't know if they gave the bench a warning I or. Think a warning, yeah. Bit of chatter from the Logan bench gets a warning from the referees. I like that though, you know, referees, they've been, there's been a lot of chatter, a bit of complaining, so I'm not gonna give them the tea, but blow the whistle and say, guys, that's enough. That's right, referees do cop it. I mean, last year I know I gave a lot to the referees, <laughs> but that's the heat of the game, isn't it? Yeah. Gay's <laughs> able to finish and the foul, and you know, we do have a referee producing for us tonight, but we can't get his opinion, but I, I do always say referees is probably the toughest job in basketball. It is. You gotta please both teams, and in the heat of the moment, they control the game, don't they? And, and, you know, it, it, it is also a learning experience for the referees, and we have to give them credit and, and remember that they don't have the benefit of the doubt That's to right. sit from the bench and see the full court. They're instructed to, you know, they, they have strict instructions they need to follow as a great catch and finish there. Um, but referees do a, do a good job, and they do the best that they can. They're only human. That's right. Good steal there by Bogue. Kick ahead from Giles to the other Bogue. Bogue able to finish with the foul. Good job there by Carly Bogue using the body. This is interesting. They're getting a couple of quick points here. I know we've only got a minute left on the clock. And and if you are if you are Bundy, you, you do have to back up again tomorrow night and play the Brisbane Capitals at Auchinflower. So I'd be uh, yeah, I'm surprised to see uh, Christina and Carly Bogue out here at the, you know, with the lead and the time. Another tough game as well, because that is a pool game, and pool games count for everything. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter where you're on the ladder. If you're the top of your pool, you go through the finals. That's it. So, you know, Logan's going to start the season on the right foot, getting the W here over the Bundaberg Bears uh, in that early pool win as well. Kate Gaze looks to attack, passes out. Yeah, good job there by Matuga, picking up the foul on Jane Lester. So, Lester... Picking up the personal foul. That's going to be her second personal. 
fourth team foul for Bundaberg, so one more and they'll be in the bonus. It's, it's again, surprised to see Gaze here out on the court, but maybe she just needs to get comfortable with her teammates. It's about five on the shot clock. Gaze is gonna have to fire here. Just inside, it's blocked by Bogue. That's Christina Bogue, but the pass up ahead to Christina is stolen by Ambrose. We're under 30 to go now. We're gonna feature Matuga, good pass there. Ambrose flirter, no good. She tips it back out to Taylor. Taylor's jump shot, it rolls in and out. And Carly Bogue comes down with the rebound. 15 seconds to go. Let's see if Giles is gonna fire away, but the ball bounces over her head out of bounds. Unlucky. And I would certainly expect the Logan Thunder to let the clock run out here with 12 seconds to go. What do you think? Do you get one up? Oh, I reckon. I reckon <laughs> give it to one of the young ones for a shot. Kate's in control though. Picks up the dribble, gets it out. Ambrose is gonna fire for three. That's short, no good. And the final score in the women's matchup is 92-68, a great first off win here for the Logan Thunder. A great balanced performance as well. We saw Gaze carry things at time. We saw Donnelly carry things at time. Ambrose was featured early. Really nice game here for the Logan Thunder. If I was Jason Chaney, I reckon he's gonna be watching this. I'll be very proud of his girls. They came out from the word get-go. They were very strong and aggressive. And look at that, they've got their first win of the season. All right, well, we'll take a quick break. We'll see if we could get some final stats for you here. And then we're going to shut things down and move on to the next stream. But we'll take a quick break and see if we can get some final stats for you here on QBL TV on Nothing But Net Media. All right, we're back with you here at the Cornubia Sports Center. It was a 92-68 win for the Logan Thunder. Katie, great performance uh, from, from the girls from Logan. Fantastic start. Like four of the starters were in double figures. Uh, Kate Gaze ended up with 27, Michaela with 16, Sarah with 19, and Sky with 12. So I'll be pretty impressed if I was Jason Chaney right now. Yeah, and Bundy, you know, first season, first game of the season, traveling with eight players, it's always going to be difficult. Um, but the Bogue sisters had themselves a great performance. That's right. The, um, one of the Bogue sisters ended up with 33 points, so she was definitely um, a star for them and 15 rebounds. And her other sister, the, no, Kylie. Kylie had 10 points as well, so... That, right. was, that was good for them. Not a bad job there from Bundy. Uh, we're going to take a break. We'll come back uh, with another stream and the broadcast of the Logan Thunder men versus the Bundaberg Bulls. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And don't forget, you can check us out live again uh, shortly in about another 10, 15 minutes.